everyone. Oh, we have ourselves a goodie here today and it is not an orchid. So if you are here for the orchids, just want to let you know they are doing fine. And watching this video, should you choose to do so, even though it has nothing to do with orchids, but this is my Gloriosa Lily. This video is like a follow-up for me because I did dig out some tubers back in December of 2021. I was a little bit concerned about how wet the winter would be, how cold it would be, and in the winter of 2020, I was a little bit anxious whether my Gloriosa tubers would actually come back. You see, they are not in the ground, they are in a container, and containers pose a little bit of a different risk when it comes to certain plants that are supposed to be hardy in my area. If my tubers were in the ground, I would have no problem with it. My lows here are five degrees Celsius, they should do fine and I wouldn't have to lift them. But the concern of 2020 made me realize I didn't want to go through that again in 2021. So I lifted the tubers in December where the vines had completely died back and I could just pull them off easily. But as you can see, I still had two where the vines were still green and I wasn't about to deny them the energy that they were absorbing from the sun to become nice and plump. So I didn't pull two tubers and those are the vines that you see growing now and we have buds which is amazing because well this is going to be a succession of Gloriosa Lily season as opposed to last year I had one big flush and a little mini flush throughout the year but this year we're going to get successive blooms which in actual fact turned out really well for me. You can see my leaves are showing a little sign of deficiency and I've only just recently put in some slow to release fertilizer on the top of the soil. I haven't worked it in or anything because I knew I had some tubers in storage and I was just waiting to plant them up. I am four weeks behind planting these tubers up. I would have preferred to have done it mid-March, but wow, March, <laughs> that was terrible weather and there's no way I was going to put myself through that or even my tubers. But Let's get those containers and I hope that I do have some tubers in them that I can actually plant. If not, well, I've got two and they are in bud. The sand was misted once only throughout the entire month while they were being stored away. I misted it very lightly with just plain RO water because I have an extremely dry climate and even though they were in perpetual darkness, I didn't want them to dry out. I think I'm seeing a water line in these containers and I wonder if my sand is still damp because I thought I saw a water line and it just didn't seem to me that I needed to mist the sand. But it feels dry, so that's concerning. <laughs> Let's see if we'd have something in there, otherwise we just have desiccated slivers. Meanwhile, the one that I cut in the other video because it had rotted already and applied cinnamon on it, that one completely desiccated. So we have to go with care and ooh, look at this. Yes, they still look like the day I put them in. There is nothing desiccated. Oh, I hope the other ones fare just as well. Yeah, the lower part of the sand isn't damp either. But we have ourselves some fleshy, juicy tubers. No desiccation at all and a growth point has started. That is so cool. The tiny little stubs of roots already coming up. That's a massive tuber for just one growth point. But I'm gonna take it. <laughs> this is great. Loving this. Now, let's see about next one. Got to handle these very, very carefully because they are brittle. There's another growth point. How cool is that? Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> what about this little one? Uh, no growth points. Not desiccated though. Any more? No growth points. No big tuber, but mm, no growth points. It's still going into the container though. Let me shake out the other ones. I don't want to be pulling hard. I don't want to be snapping any and look at this growth point that was closer to whatever light source it could find. It's already gotten some color on it. Check this out. Doesn't that look cool? Awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm happy with that. No desiccation at all in my first batch. Even this little guy here. Growth point. Happy days. Right, now I'm feeling a little bit more positive about my second container. Just checking to see if I've got any in there that I can't see. Right, 
Let's get the second one out. I'm feeling bold and brave now. A little bit more confident. <laughs> This is plain horticultural sand, not from the beach. This comes from the garden center. And of course I can reuse it. Uh, let me get you into shot. Oh, they're looking amazing. Yes, yeah, they're looking good. This is wonderful. This is, oh, I'm so excited. First of all, I had a very, very calm winter i didn't have to worry i had plan b stored away i had plan a growing in the container and when they sprouted again at least i knew i had tubers regardless of what was happening with these ones while they were being stored but i don't see any growth points on these ones nope but no desiccation no rot let's see oh i'm seeing some dry bits not on this one. Oh, but we have do we have no no growth point there let's have a oh yeah here we go huh we lost one point the other one is also desiccating but 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 that's the old tuber the fresh one has a growing point so that's going to be okay i'm not going to be cutting on this tuber at all having seen the other one that i did cut and seal with cinnamon just psh, desiccate no cutting just checking making sure i don't have another one in there okay perfect i think it's time to go and get into the soil so i'm hoping that this is all in focus uh yeah i'm gonna be probably casting some shadows but at the end of the day i think you will be able to see what i'm doing thank you so much for being here i so appreciate it you can tell I am not a gardening guru anymore. I use my kitchen gloves. <laughs> well, I don't use these specific ones for the dishes, but I have kitchen gloves for these little chores that I do in pots and the like. All my kitten caboodle was with the big, big estate that I used to culture, cultivate, and I used to enjoy gardening a lot. All right, so let's dig a trench. Let's loosen up that soil. It's got plenty of sand in it still from the last time. I don't need to be adding sand to this batch, but I do need to make some space. And we can mix in the slow release fertilizer while we're at it. So I'm just gonna take some soil out because even though the tubers don't need to be so low in the container, I don't want them that high either because, you know, once it gets warm, I don't want them to be desiccating because again, also in the warmer months of the year, a container behaves completely different to if I had these tubers in the ground. It dries out so, so fast. This container is located on the west side of my patio. So in order to avoid that, just to protect them a little bit more from getting too much exposure or drying out too quickly before they set roots, I'm going to bury them a little bit deeper than I normally would. Okay, so when it comes to placing them, Pointy side up, obviously, we can see the growth point. This one is easy. It is going straight up. What I want to do here is try to place them in such a way that I have staggered growth points, that they sort of grow up, you know, in a zigzag kind of style and not just look like a neatly placed row, so to speak. And besides, I wonder if I'm going to fit them all in <laughs> because these guys have grown to size. So we've got two next to each other right there uh, i think that'll do we're gonna have our staggered blooming fabulous here i've got the next one now uh where are we gonna put it right there we go i like it it's like putting a little bit of a puzzle together making sure they all fit with their wonky shapes there's another growing point that i can sort of fit like into the middle of the grouping right now it shouldn't look too bad let's get another one let's get the wormy looking one yeah this one doesn't have growing points but what you want to do in these cases when you don't know if they're going to go up or down make sure that any of the points that you can see are growing up you don't want to be turning this one upside down there's another one no growing point but it has a certain curvature going upwards and those are the pointy bits that need to stay up luckily all mine are growing in sort of an upward shape 
<laughs> Otherwise, I would be in trouble. <laughs> I mean, you can, you know, if you're not sure and you make a mistake, they will still find their way to the light. That's not the problem. But this way, you're kind of speeding the process up a little bit. You can help it out. I've got my little smiley face tuber here. Yeah, we can put that in the corner. That looks lovely jubbly. That'll work nicely. Now, should I be digging these up again in the winter? Then I am not going to find these shapes exactly the way they are right now. They will have transformed themselves because the back part will die off and the front part will produce another tuber. And that will be the tuber that will then grow another eye, another growing point. So even though I'm documenting what I'm doing here, this is not how I'm going to find them in the future. <laughs> and another thing is they somewhat bury themselves as well. So I have a piece that is a little bit lanky. It has sort of a bend into it. And I'm trying to make sure to protect that bend by mounding a little bit of soil around it, dig a little bit of a hole so that when I put any soil on top, the weight of that soil is not going to crack the tubers. And I want to make sure that they're kind of watered in already. It's warming up nicely. So I want to make sure that the soil around them somewhat settles instead of taking fresh soil, filling it up, and then not having such a targeted watering as I'm doing right now. This way, this soil already starts to settle around them, filling in the air gaps. Okay, let's bury them. And you can tell how primitive of a gardener I am now. <laughs> We're making it work. We're making it work. <laughs> I uh, just got to be careful of that one growing point that was already reddish. So we'll just mound a little bit of soil up in that area. Keep it a little bit more buried. And I'm going to need me some more soil. I'll be right back. So because this is fresh stuff, I don't want to, of course, compact the soil too much. Here I am adding more sand in just to keep the mix very aerated, very well draining. There shouldn't be water clogging around these tubers. They are super, super rubbery, succulent kind. They rot very, very easily. And that was my concern for the winter. So just a little bit more sand with this fresh soil to give it the same texture as what we've already got in the pot. If you're wondering why I am so obsessed with these, well, growing up in Kenya, they used to be in our hedge. They were invasive. They became enormous. And I loved these blooms from the first time I saw them. Can't tell you when that was, many moons ago, but still, I love them. And then when I could cultivate them here in Spain, I always had them in my gardens. This not being my property, I am compensating by growing them in containers. So they are a piece of home for me. And I just am so thrilled that in a couple of days, the first Gloriosa Lily Bloom of 2022 will be open. Well, I hope that you found this interesting. Thank you so much for joining me. Next video will be all about orchids again. Really appreciate your time. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On one condition though, that you do stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.